Good afternoon, grade 12 STEM students. I am April Lyra P. Gomez, a graduate at Philippine Normal University, North Luzon, with a Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in Biology, with certification in Teaching Senior High School, your General Biology 2 teacher. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, let us first offer a simple prayer. May I ask everyone to please close your eyes, bow down your heads, and pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me each day the desire to do my best, to grow mentally and morally, as well as physically, to be kind and helpful, to be honest with myself as well as with others, help me to be a good sport and a smile when I lose as well as I win. Teach me the value of true friendship. Help me always to conduct myself so as to bring credit to my school. Amen. For today's lesson, we would talk about world of animals. These are the objectives. At the end of this lesson, the student should be able to describe animals, enumerate their distinct characteristics, and explain their relevance to the diversity of life. The world of animals. Earth, the only planet that can support life, is filled with millions of different creatures. It resulted from more than 3 billion years of evolution, which allowed organisms to, di to diversify in all conceivable places on the planet. So we can see those organisms thriving from different habitats, from the land and of course from the atmosphere, the air in the air and of course in the ocean bodies. As the simplest form of life continue to evolve, the complexity of early organic compounds eventually turn into complex cellular organisms. So we have prokaryotic to eukaryotic organisms. Life form began to change and develop simple body structures and with the breakthrough of sexual reproduction, it led to the creation of offspring with mixed attributes as well as the potential of developing new species. This is now... Uh, we can see that there is an integration of technologies. That's why we are able to combine the, uh, ideal characteristics from a certain species to another species to have a better outcome. As more and more species evolved and adopted, particularly animals, they exploited new habitats and niches that favored nature to select these creatures to fill the planet with breathtaking variety of life, form, life forms. I mean. Kingdom Animalia is the biggest kingdom in the living world with at least 4 million species named and identified. And even humans is considered to be under Kingdom Animalia and is considered as the highest form of mammal. Although the exact number is not known, it is estimated that there are around 9 to 10 million species of animals inhabiting Earth. Both can be uh, vertebrates and invertebrates. Animals range in size from less than an inch, such as insects to organisms, weighing many tons, such as the blue whales and giant squids. We can see this animals in water bodies and even in the land even in the land for the we have uh, minute organisms or microorganisms for both from those habitats and we also have those macroorganisms that basically have its large physics most animals inhabit the seas with fewer organisms on fresh water and even fewer on land with the help of the following common characteristics, biologists have criteria for deciding whether an organism is an animal or not. And this is what we're going to talk about for this lesson or for, for this discussion. Now, let us define what is animal. 
animals or multicellular or eukaryotic organisms that have specialized organs and nervous system and are able to respond rapidly to stimuli. So, uh, in simpler means, they are able to interact or they are able to respond to a certain stimuli in an instant. So, the moment that they feel hot, they would immediately have a reaction, have a reaction or they would immediately respond to it. So, for example, the muscle tissue found in legs makes animal move. Say for instance that somebody pinch you in your arm or in your legs, then you would immediately have an instant movement to combat this or to prevent this. So that would more likely show how an specific organisms have the ability, have, a, have the ability of course. Now, let's find out the characteristics of animals. First, the animal, animals are organized. So, what does it mean when we say animal cells are organized? It means that they are composed of many cells. Cells or animals are organized into specialized groups with distinct functions of forming different tissues. So, we have cells. Right after cells, we have tissues, organ, organ system, and of course, uh, itself, the organism. If you would recall to our past discussion, when past discussion in our recent course, General Biology 1, we have discussed the different differentiated cell types, including including from plants and animals. So this basically compose a certain animals which make them typically as organized so tissues may be organized to form an organ which is a group of tissues working together to perform a complex job the stomach for example is made up of nervous tissues that allow it to respond to messages coming from the brain as well as muscular tissue that allow it to that to grind food in most animals, different organs form organ systems. So without these organizations from animals, they will not be considered to be an animals. Say for instance, um, an, a plant or a carabao grass do not have this particular organization. So uh, we can infer that they are not called animals. Not all animals particularly have this different organ, organ system. So, it is only that animals are composed with this. So, uh, if you're familiar with the different organ system already, perhaps they are, they are present in other organisms also. Class insecta or such or other classifications of animals. What else? Aside from animals being organized, they also obtain their food from others, which makes them as heterotrophic, very unlike to plants that are autotrophic. Unlike plants, all animals are not able to make their own food by themselves. They must obtain their energy by eating other organisms. That's why we have a classifications of carnivore, omnivore, and herbivore. So that we would determine what type of organisms it is. Thus, by ingesting other organisms, animals must possess at least, at least an oral cavity to perform this action so uh, as you can see from this picture there is the differences plants do not have an oral cavity though they have some openings from their from their structure that allows them to uh, distribute or absorb absorb nutrients from all throughout their body but particularly compared to animals they do not have an oral cavity that is why animals are categorized as heterotrophs, contrasting from green plants that are autotrophs. They were able to uh, produce their own food with only having those requirements such as sunlight, water, air, and even the nutrients from the soil. 
Most animals have an oral cavity that allows it to take in food inside their bodies. Inside this cavity, food is digested and broken down into useful substances that the animal's body can absorb and use to power its activities. So, very unlike to plants. Okay, let's have a concrete example from plants. So, one essential element or nutrients of of a soil or of a plant is nitrogen but you cannot directly or plants cannot directly absorb nitrogen or NH3 so they needed to convert it to nitrogen so they would be eventually be of use so that's uh, in, compar in comparison to animals they need or animals needs to have oral cavities in order to break down this uh, food molecules into a more smaller substances to be of, of course to be digested and absorbed in a particular body in this activity food is digested and broken down into useful substances that the animal's body can absorb and use to power its activities so with these food molecules or energy that they have in the form of ATP ATP, they are able to have its energy energy to be able to perform such activities, even if it is uh, activity that requires so much of energy. Animals also have different feeding habits. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants such as grasshoppers, snails, cows, horses, and have feeding adaptations. They possess broad teeth with flat surfaces good for grinding tough plants. Carnivores, on the other hand, are animals that eat only other animals and are mostly predators that hunt and kill their prey. So there's the difference between the two. That plants basically is, plants basically is the one that makes food for other organisms. And these animals is always dependent to animals and other organism but without plants always remember there would there would be no organisms that can thrive okay producers um predators i mean such as lions and hyenas have physical adaptive traits such as sharp claws speed agility and excellent hearing and eyesight which allows them to easily capture their prey um cheetah also leopard has its ability or has it has its speed to catch its so each animals have its distinct characteristics that makes them or that give them give them an advantage to catch its catch its prey. Their teeth are pointed and sharp, well adapted for adapted for stabbing or tearing animal flesh. Some animals such as insects, small mammals, and humans are omnivores that eat both plants and animals. So again, you could determine what, uh, what, uh, what organisms, or whether they are herbivore, omnivore, and carnivore, depending on the teeth that they have. If they all have a flat teeth, they have incisors, or canines and so on what else we have the third one animals have adaptation for escaping predators aside from feeding adaptations animals particularly the prey also exhibit ways to avoid being eaten by their predators animals such as turtles and hedgehogs have hard shells and spiny armors to protect them from other animals. Some have evolved chemical and physical abilities such as smelly sprays, stingers, and camouflage skin to avoid being detected or allow their predators to lose interest in them. So let us try to look at animals' defense in here. So you could see there that stick, stick one that is somehow uses its camouflage or yes the defense uses camouflage to have a similar color with 
with what the uh, with the object that it is laid on. So the first picture and the last picture, uh, basically, or the chameleon basically uses camouflage to be able to um, uh, move away from its predator. And octopus also releases a um, abundant amount of black ink in order to uh, uh, in order to defend itself or able to move away from the predator also. So the stingray has stingers, stingers. The skunk has or releases a bad odor. The turtle has its hard shells that typically when predator try to eat or devour it, it would own it would uh, try to hide itself from its uh, hide itself in the shells. And of course the hedgehogs with the spikes. Um, for your information only, we can uh, the turtle cannot be separated with the hard shells because uh, it's part of its endoskeleton or exo, I mean, exoskeleton. Its body structure is already intact with that of the shells. So it would be disadvantageous for them or it would only endanger them if we try to detach it from its shell. So those are the animals' adaptation for escaping predators. And for the fourth one, Animals reproduce their kind through a sexual or sexual means. Most animals reproduce by the merging of their sex cells, a tiny mobile sperm cells, and a much larger female egg cell in the process of fertilization. We are aware of this already. Given that parents have diverse characteristics and if they are united and their genetic informations are combined, there, then there could, we have a high possibility, there is a high possibility that they, they could have a unique characteristics of offspring. Some animals reproduce without the involvement of sex cells from both parents through a sexual means. A single animal can divide to form two or more organisms such as bud that grows out of its body and eventually breaks off as in the case of the hydra. So what else? We have also a male cuttlefish guarding a female cuttlefish from its rival as there is a risk that a sneaker male could make an unnoticed move and mate with the female. So there are some pictures in here. So these are some animals that reportedly reproduce asexually. So we have Komodo dragon, a somewhat, uh, somewhat fish here. Mm, a what do you call this one again a reptile and of course a shark and the sea star so do do some some instances also states that they reproduce sexually but it is a uh, research were in or observations from scientists that once in their life they were able to reproduce asexually so they are not uh, confined to sexual uh, sexual interaction or sexual means and from the i think this would be the last one animals move from place to place Movement is a diverse characteristic among animals which is usually related to obtaining food, finding a mate, reproducing its own kind, or escaping danger. Very unlike again to plants. Cockroaches scurry away in fear of being stepped on. Stationary animals that look like rocks such as barnacles can still wave their feathery arms throughout water to collect tiny food molecules. So this is some it is, is the same with corals or corals or sponge that have that still have the ability though they are stationary they still have the ability to find or to ha to have or collect its own nutrients from the in the aquatic of bodies of course 
So, what is barnacle? So, barnacle, uh, if you can recall, if you are eating mussels, if you are eating, what else? Clams and other aquatic or aquatic shelled organisms uh, they, these barnacles mostly attach themselves with these shells to uh, to find for shelter so uh, typically they are more observed to tahong if you are eating tahong although adult oysters and corals stick firmly on rocks some parts of their life cycle are spent living freely during the early weeks of its life, an oyster was a tiny swimmer. Then it attaches to a solid surface and undergoes transformation until it becomes an adult and case within a shell. What else? In addition, scientists are also studying the overall shape of the animal's body. In the body of a butterfly, for example, a line drawn down the middle of each product of it produces two halves of the same mirror images. Meaning, uh, if you, you look into the other side, the, ad, uh, the replica of the other side would be of the same to the other side. This dividing line is what we call as line of symmetry. An animal with its line of symmetry that divides an animal's body into halves with mirror images possesses a body structure known as bilateral symmetry. So, what are examples of this? We have flies. What else? Ano to? Lobster and butterfly. Each half of a fish has an eye, a nostril, and pair of fins. So, what you see from the left part is what you see from the right part. Your own, your own body has bilateral symmetry. Most animals with this symmetry are larger animals with more complex characteristics. Basically, the animal has a front end. It is this side that goes first, making them move quickly and efficiently to get food and avoid enemies. Contrasting from this appearance is that of sea anemone, which is circular if you view it from the top. If a line is drawn from its center, it will divide the sea anemone into two symmetrical halves. A rigidly symmetrical animal has many lines of symmetry that all go through a central point similar to spokes on a bicycle wheel. Because of this circular arrangement, rigidly symmetrical animals such as jellyfish and sea urchins have no distinct front and back ends. Commonly, these animals live in water and do not move fast, as they live firmly on a rock that move along water currents. Because an animal has no front or back ends, it is able to sense its its environment in all directions and to grab food coming from different sources. However, there are also animals without symmetry and they are known as acetrical animals, which usually have simple body plants with no heart, brain, kidney, or nerve cells such as sponges. The bodies of some complex animals either have a regal or bilateral symmetry. Biologists classify animals in the animal kingdom into major groups known as phylum. They are classified according to how they are related to other organisms. Taxonomists classify animals based on their certain criteria such as morphological structure of their body, embryological development, and their DNA makeup. So we would be talking more about this different phylum the next meeting. So... Uh, we have asymmetrical animals and we have the symmetrical animals. And of course, let us not forget uh, the examples first. So we can see here that the asymmetrical symmetry. Asymmetrical symmetry meaning that they don't have the same, the same characteristics in both sides. So you could see from the first picture that the beak has distortion or and this wonderful, wonderfully made in its own. So some of these also has a has its own uh, characteristics. Okay. Now moving on, we have again vertebrates and invertebrates. Those 
animals that have backbones and those animals that have that do not have backbones so uh, what makes what are those classifications of organisms that make them different so vertebrates are those of course have or have backbone and it, it includes what amphibians reptiles birds and mammals but for invertebrates uh, those what are examples of this we have earthworms leeches jellyfish and so on those without backbones or bones itself okay so those are examples or those are things that talks about animals so okay i hope that you've learned very well thank you again then see you again next week